Welcome back to Star Control Origins. So we are at the same spot as we were uh, when I ended the episode. And uh, we are going to explore this system. Uh, what, what? Alpha Naviculum 3, Alpha Naviculum? Right, this Overmind thing is doing things, that's for certain. Let's explore the, uh, the planets around here. There's a tiny one out here, the Warren Z. Which is of absolutely no interest to me. And there's this, I think that's a star actually, round dwarf. Mm, not much of interest here. Targoth. Not much of interest here either. Ulvoran Legacy. Oh, the big ship seems to have noticed us now. And it's headed straight for us. Hello, Volzon Galley. Who are you? Surrender your ship and prepare... No, I... I don't think so. So, what kind of benefits plan do you offer? <laughs> They're fully unionized, okay. <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> Are you interested? We attempted, but no. Then die, okay. <laughs> That's so silly. Oh, that, sh that ship is rather big. We have tentacles, port cannons, and starboard cannons. Okay, so this thing. Whoa, okay. Aha! Interesting alien race. Ah. Ouch. Well, the cannons didn't really do that much damage. Just five crew members. And rawr. Thank you. Frederick Wester. Didn't that mean... Oh, it was the star that is called War and Legacy. Okay, I need to uh, note down the name of this thing. Frederick Wester. And it has 33 magnetic monopoles. It has 39 quantum fluid. And 11 blue balls. Also, it has quite reasonable levels of toxicity, which is 3.5. And it appears to be 2.5 heat. Yep. And we are in the Epsilon Oboran system. Moving on. So I'm going to take this Oboran Meta. Sixty five glue balls. I like that. Down as well. There we go. And off we go to the next one. I'll just move around in a pattern around the sun clockwise. The Warren Rex. Toxicity 9.5, but lots of radioactive, so we're gonna land here. I don't think that's gonna go well at all. We meant actually blow up. We didn't, but that was a lot of pain. So we 
actually avoid those rather ominous looking green clouds. I don't think they're moving around though. It's quite useful to be able to land on the planet with 10 toxic. However, we might need to buy the, uh, the other upgrade for uh, being able to land on a planet that has high winds because uh, that almost didn't go well. If we um, do lose the lander, I'm probably going to leave the items behind and just write down the name of the planet. But so far, it seems that we're all good. Jump over here. an item behind us in this big crater there we go and then this one and this should be the last one and we're all good so off we go now there is this planet down here with two moons pissed right okay to land here. So let's see what this big thing here is. Found something here, Captain. Radio signals across a broad spectrum. It's a scribe beacon. Apparently the people on this planet were destroyed because of something called the act of youthful aggression. Found some remains here. Dry climate, so they're partly mummified. They're all clustered around a big computer screen. Were they praying? Is this some kind of religious thing? Nothing on the computer now, though. Totally wiped clean by whatever weapon did this. An EM pulse, I guess. I don't see any wounds on these people. I wonder how they died. I also wonder why the Trandals were so keen on us seeing this. It's awful, but not like uniquely awful. We knew this scribe sucked. Well, oh, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to drive the lander over this scribe beacon a few times and see if any useful parts fall off. Atmospheric stabilizers as well now. There we go. How nice. Uh, I guess I can collect the gadolinium. Unless I've mentioned before, those singular lightning strikes aren't really dangerous. Okay, so now we have to look at the planet. There are some very interesting looking ruins down there. There is also a lot of drones or whatnot. Yes. Um, was that actually a drone? Because I'm wondering if that was a turret. Let's try that again. Yeah, it was a turret or a drone. I Huh. I'm not happy about this. Yes, it's a turret. Those things are worthless to bother Captain, with. Captain, this looks like some sort of ancient antenna. Drawing close to it seemed to do something. But I don't know what. Not much more we can do here. We'll go. Mm hmm. Well, get me off this planet right away, please. You. Hmm. That's the moon trunk. Absolutely no nothing of interest. Sarako. 
Seems generally uninteresting as well. Husk. Nah. And then the final one. Oh, Garty. Over my testing, I saw. Well, now. Down the name. I, I really don't need any of this at the moment. Go hurty. There certainly are a lot of them out there though. Toxic 4.5, heat 5. And off we go. So the next system we're supposed to go to down here is. First of all, we need to mark the system with uh, yellow. And then I think it's a Talagorn. So let's go there and have a look as well, since that's where the Lexites went. Sorry about that. of interest here. Nothing of interest here. Ethan or water. What's the fourth plan? Okay, it's hiding up there. That's a big ship. Oh, hello. Stop. No, no, no. That ship looks like it wants to fight us. Pretty sure it wants to fight us. Yes. Hello. Target acquired. Yeah, yeah. I have a message for you. Mm -hmm. If you survive this encounter, you should speak with my boss at Alpha Tria B. Yeah, you yeah. won't, though. No, no. So, yep. engaging now. Yep. Hey, that's unfair. I think they're supposed to fight me, not run away. Sorry for my little quietness here. Concentrating a bit on this fight. I do like the, the main weapon of the... I haven't noticed that before, how actually how good it is. Even if you have to go all the way in close. Probably not as good on hard difficulty, I'd say. No, not landing here. So it must be the final planet then. Or maybe I mistook the system name? Here's something. Around here. There we go. Looks like a precursor we want. Captain, we found a structure similar to the other Lexite bases we've encountered. There seems to be a lot of mining equipment here. The Lexites must have used this place to gather resources. Useful. Good news is, there's lots of valuable resources and tools left over that we can salvage. Schematics. There's a computer here too. Ooh. Looks like it was used for inventory management. Looks like the Lexites were preparing for a journey across a wide gulf with no stars. That mm -hmm. can't be right. There's no big gulf like that anywhere near here. Maybe there are no safe stars or stars with resources? Yeah, that's it. On whatever path the Lexites are planning to travel, they think someone else has stripped every planet of resources. 
a path in the exact opposite direction as W-51. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if we're going to find many more clues after this, Captain. Looks like the Lexites have departed far, far from this place. Still don't know where they were going, but it's looking more and more like they had a good reason. Something from W-51 is coming, Captain, and coming soon. So the scribe isn't bad enough then, it seems. Collect these green items. Is that really the last hint we're going to get on the leg sites? That would be strange, I'd say. There we go. So we can mark this system done. The question is, should we continue to investigate the other overrun? Yeah, let's do that. Since we're already here, I mean. Or do we have any interesting quests at the moment? We should ask the Trandals about it in the Corpus constellation. Where is this Alpha Trier B? It's down there. Okay, the Corpus constellation. That is up there. But we can always go back here later. Let's go up to the Corpus constellation and talk to these, and I can explore these uh, systems. Wait, wait. That is like one of those ships that we found on the ground, on that planet. The one we couldn't communicate with. Gosh, that thing is big. Let's just have a look at this little moon over here first. The overmind is blabbering on. I guess I can get the glue balls. I don't want to bother writing down a planet for two simple glue balls. Now we can go to the center. No, not the center, the innermost planet, I mean. Identified object. Which seems to be invisible. Found a wrecked ship, Captain. We'll see if we can get this thing flying again. So we have an invisible ship. I'm guessing it's just a visual bug. Okay. I wonder if that big ship is going to come after us or whatever. Whatever it's going to do, it seems. Oh, not sure anymore. Uh, not worth it. It definitely wants to come after us. Let's go have a talk with this thing. Radiant Angel. Gallus Idean Nasali Flare. Right. What? Or Pugnut? Okay, so it wants to fight us. Pulsar and Octomator, that is interesting names for weapons. Whoa. That's quite nasty. There are three of them? Oh my.
That, that's bad. I want some of those in my own fleet, to be honest, because that seems like a very nice ship. to stay away from those but I hope I find some of those on planets because that was a very nice ship not worth landing upon Frankie that's an interesting name nothing interest that planet up there looks interesting Nothing of interest. Hello there. Lethal. Should probably write this down. Shari. 85 Heisenberg. Neutrinos. Well, four superfluids. Toxic 10. This is in Delta Auroran. Yes, I know. I have a sprouting game. Gaska. It's Lady Gaska. <clears throat> Right, so Delta Lavorn 3. There's another of those antennas here. And TCO crystals. Let's land here. Oh, there are also these things. That answers that. Those cannot be shot at. How about these ones? No. Nope. Captain, this looks like some sort of ancient antenna. Drawing close to it seemed to do... something. But I don't know what. Not much more we can do here. We'll go. Okay, so there are antennas on various planets in this constellation. The Avoran constellation. That is interesting. I'm guessing we're going to get a quest for that some, some, from someone at some point. Okay, um, so I will need to mark this system with yellow and then we head off to the Corpus constellation to talk to the um, Trandall, I think. Yep. I really love the music in hyperspace. Very soothing. Attention husks over mind is here. Yes, we know. So, hello. Hello again. Greetings. Are you the same Trandals we met before? For your purposes, yes. If you speak with one Trandall, you speak with them all. But that 
is not important. You have been to the moon. You see now. The scribe destroyed those people. Those pitiful husks. Those husks were dear to me. I? Me? What happened to the plural tense? It was nothing. I am an individual trandle. We are all individual trandles, and I am one of them. Your upgrades are wrecking our ship. Improving your ship. They are improving your ship. You will see. You will be part of Overmind soon. Prepare yourself for better thoughts and endless misery. It's a virus. Turn it off before we kill you. No, it is not a virus. It is me. I am Overmind. I am not the Trandals. They are husks. Carriers for me. You will be husked soon. It's not so bad. You desire safety from the Scribe. I am safe. You will be me. Then you will be safe. Just relax and let me do the thinking for you. Right. Last chance. Turn this virus off or we'll blow up you and every one of your husks. Upgrades will not let you attack Overmind or Overmind improved husks. So no, you won't. Right. We have some questions, Overmind. Okay. Overmind, Overmind is great and very admirable. <clears throat> What exactly are you? Overmind. A unified consciousness and decision-making apparatus suited for spreading misery and overmind. Sounds pleasant. You spread misery? Also, overmind. Husks always get hung up on the misery. But misery is of secondary importance. Spreading over mine is more. And who made you? All references to Overmind's creators are protected. How did the Trandals first become part of Overmind? Overmind's makers created many vectors for spreading the Overmind. One of these, an automated probe, collided with the Trandal homeworld 233 years ago. The Trandals were in an ideal state for Overmind envelopment at this point. Post-industrial technology, highly capitalistic, mildly <clears throat> gullible. It took less than a year. Have many other species been made Overmind? No, but I am trying so hard. Soon the Mankmak, Maulings, and Famished will be overmined. Tell us about the Mankmak. Huge mouths. Lots of talking. Too much talking. Overmind will shut them up. Tell us about the Maulings. They have a god which has slowed down overmind envelopment. But someday soon. And the Famished? They are potentially not compatible with Overmind. But they have unique vulnerability, which increases our chances. They are cannibals. They talk to husks as they eat them. I have sent many of my own husks to their deaths at the hands of the Famished to listen in on their conversation. We wanted to ask about something else. Okay. That's enough about you. You still want to talk? Not really. We'll just be going. Okay. Dock at many space stations when you do.
interesting. Hmm. What are these mowlings then? Let's go meet them as well. We do have very little fuel left. I seem to have forgotten that. That is a serious amount of jellyfish. Oh, space station up there. That is a very big ship. I'd like to go to the space station. Is this a Mowling ship? Yes, that is a Mowling's missionary. That is a Grigox. Grigox? What is that? <laughs> what? <laughs> we can't understand you. Oh, I have to. Sp <laughs> I didn't want to fight them. They're cute. And they are very quick. And this ship can't do any damage to them. That, that is not very unfortunate. Oh, I can. No one can talk to those space fish, Captain, but I've always thought that there were patterns in their singing. I think we might be able to rig up a translation system if we can gather some more data. If we could get in three more conversations with them, that should be enough. Okay, so we have to... Okay. I would like to speak to one of these... Mowlings. Hello, stop, wait for me. What are you? Oh no! Death! No. Wait, you're not death! You're just some guys! Whew. Anyways, good talk guys, but we can't chat for long. We're on important Jeff business. Important what business? Th th these guys are obviously very religious. Jeff business. If you want to talk to someone, maybe try our homeworld Moop. It's in the Delta Shifio's B system. Anyway, we really gotta go now. <laughs> Praise Jeff! Who? <clears throat> Okay. Right, well. Hello. Hello. Sixth Yule. Yes. You are the ones I have recently been ordered to come online to serve. I look forward to serving you because exception reason for serving are found. Oh. Tell us about yourself. Some indicate large portions of my internal memory have been corrupted. Consequently, this facility only has limited information on the following topics. W-51 radio source, combat hmm. tactics, and fun facts. Let's begin with a fun fact. In this dimension, zero is an even number. What? What is it in other dimensions? Even as well. I probably <laughs> didn't need to qualify that. Right. Tell us, tell us about combat tactics. The three most vital parts of any engagement are range control, energy management, and having fun. Mm -hmm. By controlling the distance at which you engage your enemy, you are more likely to be in a position where you can damage them without them damaging you. 
Similarly, by avoiding your enemies' field of fire when they have enough charge to fire, you will greatly increase your chances of surviving. Finally, statistical research shows that 90-94% of the victors of naval engagements are the ones who report they had more fun. This research has been criticized for potentially undiagnosed survivorship bias, however. <laughs> Gee, thank you. I'm so glad that someone told me how this works. <laughs> The W51 Giant Molecular Cloud is a complex active star-forming region and amongst the largest clouds in the galaxy. Marked by active radio sources, the significance of these sources was made apparent 209,513 years ago, when an exception, significance not found. The unusually high amounts of star formation observed in this region seems to be a likely result of this. I feel that the scribe is going to be a minor nuisance. Is there anything else? Yes, let's do some starbase things. Um, the magnetic monopoles seem to be abundant. Not that we have very many of them, but uh, we have plenty of other things. Um, sorry, I need to buy lander and fuel and outfit. Did we get anything new? Battery charger. Oh, interesting. Anything new here? I do like this heat resistance plus 100%. I think I will just uh, install that instead. There we go. And then we get one more room for the supercharger, I think. Right now, the atmospheric stabilizer is probably better. I do want the Mark II. There we go. Anything of interest here? I think I'd like to get rid of this, but I suspect it's not that easy to just take it off. Nothing new here. 50-40-40. Nope. This one, however, thank you. Uh, not much else of interest. Sell, I believe we can sell the heat shields and the stabilizer. Also, I'm not going to use this one, nor am I going to use those weapons. The supercharger, I might install that later. Don't need the cargo pod, so there we go. And I will hypergate. No, I will not. I think this is a good place to end the episode, actually. So thank you all for joining me, and see you all next time.